is we're here in where we're at now. We are in Port Royal. Port Royal. Port Royal, and I'm here to go check out this this museum, and I'm here with some Jamaican ladies, and I'm 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 asking them like, why Jamaicans never smile? Because everyone want to know, right? So this is the thing to just like. Ask them what you want to ask them. So I'm going to ask them a question for you. So tell me now. People are watching. People want to check it out. So why, when people come to Jamaica, right, people never smile here? Like, what's the problem? Maybe you just get them at a wrong time. Yeah. Because economically, no, no people don't really have it. Mm -hmm. So if you come and see me in my book state, mm -hmm. and I'm miserable, that don't mean that... This is how I'm always be. Yeah. You understand? But yeah. maybe you can't make the wrong time because listen, yeah. Jamaica is a crazy place. People <laughs> smile, people laugh. Mm -hmm. Things that people take serious, we take it for joke. Amen. All right. So hurricane like or come, and we take it for joke. All right. So you now, understand? So I don't know, maybe just meet the wrong persons at the wrong and, and, time. And, and what's the price? Why, why there's two different prices? Well, I'm just a worker here. Because people's gonna come. Like, yeah, I'm you know. just working here, but guess what? They yeah. set the prices. Overseas visitors pay one price. If you can produce an ID, mm -hmm. then you get it at a lower yeah, rate. Jamaican, yeah. Prove that you're Jamaican. Jamaican. Then you get it at a lower rate. And what's your name? I'm Charmaine. Guys, she's here all shy and stuff. She don't want to be in the oh, camera. She's hiding. Look at her. She's a cute lady. So if you come to Port Royal, Port Royal, you come check her out. What's your name? Charmaine, she's at the front desk, admin, right there, she's right there. She's a tour guide. Okay, All right, so if you come here, make sure you come and see Charmaine. All right, and what's your name? Angie. Angie's very nice to me, so come and show Angie some love, all right? And I don't want this lady over here, she's hiding, so. Let's see her, and she's talking to some person. All right, so let me go check out my thing, all right? So all right cool. Angie's gonna be a tour guide. All right, cool. <laughs> No, nah, man. Go and do the tour right now with him. <laughs> the tour is going to start now. Oh, this guy? Yeah, go with him. Oh. You're the tour guide inside. Oh, okay, 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 okay. You yeah, give me a job. <laughs> Where you from? Canada, man. Canada. Yeah. You? Oh, I'm from Jamaica. She's from Virginia. I used to live in the States. Ah, oh, man. Okay, okay. But well, get deported now. Ah, uh, but you're still looking good, bro. <laughs> and I've been here for like 10 years. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, okay. It's life now. And those are uh, police over here or something? No, this is the army base. This is the, uh, the army base. Oh, that's the army? Yeah, these soldiers. Oh, they're soldiers. Guys, now we're at, we're at the Port Royal. Um, I don't even know the history of this place, but uh, I mean, we're gonna find out right now, right? Yeah, Go check it. out my channel, Rock4TV2. Rock4TV2. R A C K F O R T TV2. Yeah. 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 
All right, no problem. What's the history of this place, though? From pirates in the Caribbean days. Pirates? Pirates in the Caribbean. All right, so explain to my to my peoples, man. Like, what do you mean? Wait till Andrew comes. <laughs> <laughs> oh man and these guns are for what like oh uh, when they used to fight fight i guess when it uh i guess when the blacks was coming over from africa and they okay. used to fight some of the slave ships okay okay they should shoot those guns right they shoot those guns okay okay Out of your shot. <laughs> it's YouTube, it's all good, bro. I don't know if you guys could see this, but the goats uh, forced Charles. Um, I don't know whatever's going on with this place, but uh, we're about to find out. I'm assuming it's everyone's first time here or yeah. first time in a while or something? First time for me. It's my second time. Mm -hmm. That's a map of Port Royal. Oh, this is the whole Port Royal? Yeah, that's Port Royal. These are the islands that we have off the coast of Port Royal on that side. Across the harbor, that's Kingston, no, the capital. About 300 years ago, the former capital of Jamaica would be Spanish town across the island. Hmm? But as soon as the other group member comes, I'll fill you guys in on what happened here over 300 years ago. Right? And the duration of the tour is approximately 45 minutes. So two tours to do. <coughs> In and around the fort and an outside tour to the tilted structure that's nicknamed the Giddy Hut. So it's two tours, right? Right, right, right. Waiting on somebody else? Yeah, waiting on another person. Just in the bathroom. <laughs> First and foremost, a bright and pleasant good afternoon to you guys. Good afternoon and welcome to this historical site, for Charles. Right? My name is Andrew Gordon. I'm going to be your tour guide. Right? Separate and apart from me being a tour guide here at Fort Charles, I am also a resident of this historical community. Of Fort oh, Charles, right? you live here? Yeah, born and raised oh. here. So this is what a commander's desk would have looked like. And the commander would be the person in charge of the fort and the fort operation. So the two white buildings behind me, the smaller of the two, that's yeah. where the commander of the fort lived, the larger of the two, that's where the commander worked, okay? So normally his desk would be in his working office, that's the larger building, but because most of our guests are school children, they all can't fit inside that small building, so we carry the desk here to entertain a wider group of persons, mm -hmm. okay? Now on the map as we speak, this is where we are, so this is Fort Charles, right? Fort Charles was the first of six fortifications that the British built here in Port Royal before the year 1740. This fort in particular was built in 1656, that's the following year after the British captured Port Royal and Jamaica from the Spaniards on May 10th in 1655. So at maximum, Fort Charles had 104 cannons mounted right around it, right? 
The ones behind you, these are replicas. As you can see, the ones ahead, these are original cannons. However, we got welders to seal the back of the gun. Because normally, the back of them could be opened and you would fill it with gunpowder and you put the cannonball in the front part of the gun. So at the back of each gun, it had a string or a wick, similar to when you light a candle. So once you light that and the flame touches the gunpowder inside, it implodes from the back and the explosion will send the cannonball firing forward. Right? And I'm assuming that you all drove in vehicles to get here. You're parked on the outskirts, right? Yeah. If you look at the map, this is where the parking lot now is. Mm -hmm. So over 300 years ago, you needed a boat to be out there. The fort was surrounded by sea over 300 years ago. So through those old you know, have land. If you look closely here, it used to be water. So what I'll do is explain how we now have land on that side. The main road that you all drove in on, this is the ship of drove here to get to four charts right? right if you look closely this part is broken off mm -hmm. so over 300 years ago my hometown port royal was not connected to jamaica so oh no no you couldn't drive in here so this this here. here is the water yeah so look here this is what you'd have to take to get here ships oh. and boats oh, right okay. so port royal inside was approximately 51 acres of white sand surrounded by water so the same color sand, that's what you'll find on these little islands off the coast. We call them keys, right? The yeah. most famous island <coughs> on the coast is called Nine Key. This one. So apart from to come to Fort Charles and get this tour, you can take a boat ride from the fishing village. Within 20 minutes, it gets you to Nine Key. This is the ideal one to go to because a lot of reefs are around the other islands, so the boats can't dock there. So this is a white sand beach where you can go. You have to take along with your food and beverages. You go there for swimming, recreational activities, and from time to time, parties are hosted here. But as it relates to Port Royal, over 300 years ago, this village was classified as the richest and most sinful city in the entire world. Port Royal? Yeah, yes. Port Royal. For real? Yeah, 300 years ago, Port Royal had a population of 6,500 people. So you had wealthier folks that came from England, Ireland, Scotland and Wales living here. Some of them were Christians, some of them were Jews, right? But approximately 2,500 of the population were enslaved males and females from Africa. Mm -hmm. So the females from Africa, they did the household work here and they did laundry for the soldiers. Mm -hmm. 500 soldiers worked at Fort Charles to operate 104 cannons, right? Now, the males from Africa, they built the fort. So we had six of them. Fort Charles was the first one. So we had Fort Charles, Fort James, Fort Carlisle, Fort Rupert, Fort Walker, and Fort Morgan. The five other forts used to be in this. Guys, city. you guys check it out. Yeah. This is historical right? moment so this for royal. This portion so. of land, this used to be land above sea, right? All of this body of land is now buried under 30 foot of the Kingston Harbor. So before there was a tragic earthquake which happened. On yeah, I remember that. I remember that. 1692. Remember, the British built all of their structures on white sand. In the Bible, it states that the wise man built his house on rock or solid ground. In other words, it's not smart to build on sand. The British built forts, churches, taverns, shops, marketplaces, and 2,000 houses were built here for 6,500 people to live here. So as an island. This was the port of entry for pirates to come and trade whatever they stole from French vessels and Spanish vessels. So in those days they stole gold and silver or any other valuable material. This was the place where they came and traded those items. In Port Royal? Yeah, in Port Royal. So the residents of the town offered those pirates the finest food to consume here. They gave them the finest inns to reside in, the finest room to drink and the finest women. Okay. So prostitution <laughs> played a major role here yeah. 300 years ago. You guys hear that, right? I have a question, guys. Legal age for consuming alcohol, no. Re worldwide range is from ages 18 up to 21 years old, right? 300 years ago, here in Port Royal, as early as seven children could legally have rum and wine. What? Yeah, so even children were drunk joking, and right? disorderly behavior. No, seriously. <laughs> At age 10, they could legally smoke tobacco. What? So the Europeans that lived here, their growth was stunted. Average height range from 3 feet 9 inches to 4 feet 5 inches. Whoa, so you whoa. may have noticed upon entering the arch is low. And if you compare the top half bricks to the lower bricks, the top half ones look relatively new, right? Uh -huh. They were restored in the early 2000s with cement used to compact those bricks, right? The lower ones are original from the 1650s. They came here from England. So they brought them on ships. 
and then the slaves from Africa, they didn't have cement or steel. So 300 years ago, they would use a combination of sand and silt from riverbeds, limestone, and the sticky substance from sugarcane called molasses. That's what held the bricks intact for over 300 years. These bricks that we are now walking on, these aren't original. These were repaved in the 1950s because the 1692 earthquake sank four charts, three and a quarter feet into the earth's surface. So the foundation got destroyed. If you look there, you see the red brick foundation, those are part of the original sections of the floor. So these aren't original. So the whole floor was originally red brick? Yeah, everything was red brick. Were the bricks made from No, brought from England and Ballast and ships, right? So as it, as it relates to the treasure chest and the skull, these are replicas. The treasure chest, skull and bones, that's the symbol or emblem of piracy. And that's what built Britain's economy. Piracy and extensive trading from 1655 to 1691. Port Royal is labelled as the richest and most sinful city in the world. So six days of the week, persons engaged in stealing, drinking, gambling, smoking, acts of beheading, hanging. Wow. And on Sundays, apart from the Jews, everybody went to church. So six days of sin, one day of repentance. So when that earthquake struck, June 7, 1692, yeah. there was a quake and then a tsunami came from the harbor. So the sea drew back, rose up, rampaged the city. When it receded to its rightful area, it swallowed this 33 acres of land. So all, so of, this, all of this land yeah, was all in, of the this, sea in the sea yeah. And the colored portion reflects 18 acres of land that survived. So more than half the city is underwater. Right now? Yeah. And so this right here is yeah, underneath the yeah, water? all of this. All of this is the sunken city. So you can dive down there and see. Yeah, but you see the guys playing football? Yeah. Yes. Those are military soldiers. Here. Right. So they operate on the opposite side. They are coast guards. So their right. job is to patrol the sea, to cut off drug trafficking, and to stop illegal fishing activities. Because Port Royal today is a fishing village. So you cannot catch seafood when it, you cannot catch lobster when it's not um, lobster sea. Oh. So be charged and fine for that. Oh, yeah. But their major role is to protect this area from illegal diving and excavating. Okay, I got you, got you. More than 4,000 people died. What that 1692 earthquake did, despite it took land away from the town, that side, it naturally gave land to the town on that side. So we have two other parishes on the east of Port Royal. One is called Portland, the other is called St. Thomas. The 1692 earthquake affected those areas and triggered off a massive landslide. So the parishes are to this end current of the sea started to wash down deposit of sand and silt naturally here over 200 years it compact into the space and naturally connected us so we got naturally connected to the process of deposition continued and sand and silt were carried along the face of the town and in front of the fort and gave us new land here that's, that land, right that's right. that land right here so you see by the 1800s so much land was gained that these cannons here could not hit enemy ships anymore so I, I have an outside tour to take you on to show you larger cannons that the British built on the new land and they built a structure to store ammunition for those bigger cannons, right? You see that ammunition building? It actually sank 10 feet and got tilted 16 degrees by the second earthquake in 1907. Us as Jamaicans, we nicknamed that building the Giddy House because when persons enter it, they say they feel a tip-top, junk-like or oozy sensation. So I'm going to take you guys into that structure for the outside. Also, oh, two airplanes report right now. Three. Three. Oof. 1692, 1907 and 1957. But this first one was the most terrible of the three. Right, so which, which one is the Giddy House? second one, 1907. Yeah. Later on, we're going yeah, to we're gonna get to this. But I'm going to show you guys what life was like here before 1692. Because um, in this building called the magazine room, this is where all the ammunition of the fort were kept. So the gunpowder were kept in those barrels, and they had 150 of them. The cannonballs were kept in these boxes. They had 70 to 100 of them. And when I take you upstairs, that's where they went for restroom purposes. But the three guys could use it at the same time. Take a look in the magazine. Watch your steps, please, and thank you. I'll show you a replica cannon right, from, this, from this box. The original one, I'll show you some of them on the tour. They were the same size, but this one is very light because it's replica. So, have you guys ever watched the movie Pirates of the Caribbean? Yeah, yeah. Alright. Not like when you watch that movie and see these being fired and they exploded, they would not explode. They were made of, of iron. 
the aim is to fire it once it hits a wooden ship it would bore a hole in it water would fill it and the ship would sink so it would not explode right so we had 70 to 100 of these boxes and 150 of those to store gunpowder so you can enter the magazine oh, how heavy were the cannonballs 36 pounds 36 pounds yeah one of these sizes we had smaller ones that weighed five to seven pounds for closer range they also use a chain shot as well they use bar Oh shit, is it safe inside bro? Yeah it is, definitely. You sure? Yeah. I'm not going in man. I'm stay outside. If you spook you already. Yeah. Nah, I'm not going in. So so this is what building again? Yeah, this is the magazine room where they store. Right, where they store the guns and stuff? Yeah. Uh, so when, when the earthquake came, this was safe. No, this was built after the first earthquake. Uh, this after was the built first in seventeen seventy. Okay. Yeah. The first earthquake destroyed the first original magazine room, which was in the middle of the Okay, okay. Well, this, but is this original though? though? It's all original inside? Yeah. What we did we punched up the old skirt and the flooring, but the old interior where the art is that's original guys this is a magazine room back in the days mm -hmm. i ain't going inside though and in my personal view i'm gonna take you guys to the most important room at the foot but you guys have to watch your heads because it's built for the shorter people <laughs> They were really short, you know, they were really short tempered also. Yeah. yeah. You can see how the, the restrooms now are private, where each person goes to, to their own cubicle. Yeah. Here, three guys should use it at the same time, no doors also. Okay. But in those days, they urinated in containers and they defecated in separate containers. And I'll tell you why they did that. Just remember to watch your head. We call them restrooms or bathrooms, but then they call them necessary houses. That's why I think it's the most important room because it's necessary to have these houses. Yeah. See, it's not called bathroom back in the day. It's called necessary necessary house. Oh boy, this is small, man. Oh, these are the toilets? Mm -hmm. Now, you see, 275 years ago, British soldiers, they wore pearly white uniform, right guys? But they did not have soap or bleach in that time. So, the reason why they urinated in separate pans and defecated in separate pans, they used their urine and their feces, they recycled it. So, they wore Yo. pearly white uniforms, white vest, white long sleeve shirt, white pants. So when they got dirty, they would put them in large wooden pans and they would pour urine onto it and they place those pans in the sunlight for two weeks. That's a fortnight, right? Oof. Then Oof. females of African descent would come from the town here to do laundry. So what they would do after two weeks... Guys, check it out, right? They strain the urine off, the, off the, the clothes and they would boil water and throw hot water onto the garments repeatedly. And that's what got out the stains and dirt because ammonia, that's a natural bleach like substance that's in our urine. That's what washed garments 300 years ago. They separate pans with the feces, they spread it evenly in the town's gardens and that's what grow their plants or crops. So it's human fertilizer, they call it the night's man soil. Each soldier was given the jug filled with water to wash his hands. Mm -hmm. What we now have that they didn't, we have toilet paper. What they used, each guy was given a piece of cloth to clean himself when he number two, right? So you, you are you're a Jamaican? Mm -hmm. You're Jamaican. Mm -hmm. I'm from Canada. Canada. You're from Canada? Yeah. Where are you guys from? California. California. All right. So you guys will know the Jamaican expletives, right? But I'm going to teach you about two Jamaican expletives that came from necessary houses. The pieces of cloth that the guys were given in standard English, they called them bum cloth to clean one's bum. Us as Jamaicans, we turn it into a naughty word. Ah, oh. we add guys, you hear that? And O. So if you say bum, B-O, cloth, 
if you say bumbo cloth as a person from California, you guys see where the bad words came naughty, from, right? Right. So we turn it into a naughty word, but the guys actually use that to clean themselves. But what is it a naughty word? Like what is the equivalent? All right. You see, we use them to, to express ourselves. Like say for instance, your cell phone, your cell phone fell on the ground. Mm -hmm. Like you guys would say S H I T. Mm -hmm. We would say that if our cell phones drop. Bum, bum, bum. Yes. And then, <laughs> and then in those times, the, the females didn't have paddings to use whenever their sisters visited from the Red Seas. Yeah. They were given pieces of cloth also, but in standard English, they called them a Oops. blood cloth. Oh, blood cloth. Yes, but we speak, all right, we speak in an official dialogue yeah. called yeah. patois, mm -hmm. right? So for example, I'm meeting you guys for the first time, Standard English, hey guys, what's going on? Mm -hmm. But in Patwa, I say, hey guys, Wagwan. So Wagwan is Patwa or Standard English, what's going on? So instead of saying blood cloth, we don't say cloth, we say clot. So if you guys would say that, blood and clot, that's a naughty word here. But it meant padding, and the other one meant toilet. And it's also an expletive of just. Like, yeah, basically. Okay. Yeah. But the evolution of the words, you asked about the PC, mm -hmm. it's because the words evolved. And now we have the RC and mm -hmm. the BRC. Mm -hmm. But the basic two came from the necessary houses. Okay. So don't use them in public, especially you two, right? Away from Jamaica, they use them. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> from, right. from, from here, I'm going to show you guys what a king size bed looks like 200 years ago. Okay. It will be one of the smallest king size beds you'll see. Because if you remember, persons couldn't grow past four feet five inches, right? And our shoes that we now have on, right and left footed shoes, 300 years ago, shoemakers from Europe built two straight shoes so you could put any foot in either. So you couldn't say you're late to go to a morning's muster to salute or those drum loads, right? Mm -hmm. But the longer persons wore those, they were short and they had scoliosis and spinal complication. I'll show you guys all of that. What's your head? Watch your step, watch your step. This is cool, yo. The tickets that you guys bought, you will see three persons on it. The guy in the red and yellow uniform is a British citizen. Guys, welcome. This is Poor Royal. It's giving you the history, what happened back in the day here. It's really cool, man. So if you ever come to Jamaica, yo, come check it out. It's really cool. When they captured Calico Jack in 1720 off the coast of Port Royal, there were 43 members on his ship. 41 were males and 2 were females, right? By 1720, Sir Calico Jack, he actually did not want to sign a letter of mark. You see, once you sign a letter of mark, they're no longer a pirate. Pirates sail vessels, they steal wealth, and they take lives free handedly. Once you sign a letter of mark, you are now called a buckle. Legal pirate, so you get license from the British to steal and take life. That's the difference between a pirate and a buccaneer. Buccaneers, though, when they steal, they have to hand over 90% of what they stole to the British state and keep 10%. Right? So, because Captain Captain Calico Jack refused to sign in 1720, they captured him, captured all the men, 43 of them came to the fort, and 41 of them got executed in the courtyard. I'll show you where the execution turned out would have been in the middle of the court section. So the two females avoided execution because they pretended to be pregnant. So instead of being beheaded, they sent them downstairs where you went to the restroom. The restrooms were the jail, they called them the brig. So they sent them to jail in 1720. In 1721, Mary Reed, the female on the ticket, she died of yellow fever. And Annie Bonnet, she managed to escape. Now how could she escape when I told you 500 British soldiers were here? State in history that females always have tricks up their sleeves. That's from three <laughs> You guys hear it first. <laughs> oh. Privateer. Privateer, he now has license to.
purchase slaves and start businesses. So Captain Henry Morgan, he's also on your ticket. He was also a privateer. So he started as a pirate, became a buccaneer, became a privateer, and in 1670 he was knighted and became the first Lieutenant Governor General of Jamaica. Okay. So, from a so it's more more legitimacy. Yeah, further, more legitimacy the further you go. But he died in 1688. He's the guy on the ticket, Captain Henry Morgan. Yeah. Can he, I see the ticket? Of, you don't mind? Yeah, he died of cirrhosis. He was a heavy drinker, mm -hmm. and if you look around sections in Europe, he has a number one selling alcohol named Captain Morgan Drum, named after him, mm -hmm. which I don't advise persons to drink too much of that rum since he died of drinking too much rum, right? Uh, let's take a look in the larger of the two white buildings. This is the quartermaster section. This is where the higher rank soldiers lived and slept. We'll have a look here and then in the quartermaster section. Mm. Oh, it's a store in here? What, what is it? So, we know we sell um, refreshments, souvenirs, but it's also a lot of historical photographs. There's Kelsa Jack Rackham, the guy in the middle, that's him. Mary Reed is on the left, Manny Bonnie is on the right. A few moments from now, I'm going to take it to that building. That's the, this one, this tilted one is the Giddy House, right? Nicknamed the Giddy House. So, so this is Calico Jack? No, this is Calico Jack, right? Uh -huh. Calico Jack, that's Mary Reed and that's Annie Bonnie. Uh -huh. That's Calico Jack. So the town of Port Royal also experienced eight fires and more than 22 hurricanes. The two most dreadful hurricanes would be 1951's Hurricane Charlie and September 12, 1988 Hurricane Gilbert, the Port Royal after hurricanes. So we had eight fires, 22 hurricanes, three earthquakes. Well, that was in Gilbert. Yeah, 1988, that means it's after Port Royal, right? And then this building, if you look closely, up above Royal Art Store, this is the short name for Royal Artillery Store. So they built it in 1888 under the regime of Queen Victoria. When built in 1888, the structure would be 10 feet higher and was level. This building sank 10 feet and got tilted 16 degrees during the second earthquake, January 14, 1907. So are they staying on the second story then? Yeah, the second floor. So the first floor was built 10 feet on the So what we did now, we placed supporting beams at the back of the structure that would prevent it from total collapse. And I take you guys outside, I'm going to operate a cannon at 90. I'm going to operate by remote control to show you guys the movement of what the original one did manually. And this is replica, replica skull, replica, replica skull and bones, symbol of piracy. And those would be flags that you will see on pirate ships there. That's an older map of Jamaica, what it looked like. If you look at it, and point out where we are on the map. Do you work here? Yeah. On the map. This, be, this is where we are, Port Royal, right? Now, Jamaica has 14 parishes, but if you look at this map, you'll see that they were not called parishes, they were called precincts, right? So, this map is a lot older, over 300 years ago, an artistic impression of what Jamaica looked like. Now, this section, where you now have sea, is filled in with land, because I'm going to take you there to walk. Remember I told you the parish called St. Thomas? This is St. Thomas here. So the current of the sea started to deposit sand and silt from the rivers there all the way around and filled in this section of the land. If you guys get a chance to go to an area here called Hellshire in St. Catherine, mm -hmm. that section is rapidly losing land because of the Yeah, yeah, yeah. Called. I saw, Erosion, I saw. Right? Yeah. So that side is losing land. Yeah, I saw this it. This side is gaining land. Oh. So if you look at a more recent photograph. Because the water is really in now. Yes. Oh, in. true. So if you look at a recent map, you'll see that this section now has lost land while these sections have gained land. So in another century to come, the shape of Jamaica will change drastically because of those processes, erosion and deposition. Okay? And lastly, when I take you to this tilted building in the Giddy House, you won't be seeing the train track. But bear in mind that this photograph is in between 1920s to the 1940s, right? So in that time span, we had a running train here inside the town of Port Royal. The 
the train ran inside the town of Port Royal only. So it would actually take ammunition from forts to other areas and we had a, we had a running tram car, right? Now, I'm not sure if you guys are all aware of the term scrap metal in. Guys that steal metal illegally sells it for money. So most of these were stolen during that time span when scrap metal was at its peak. So you won't be seeing the train shop going up to the gate. Right? But just bear in mind that Port Royal had running trains, we had running water, and we had electricity. Train shops that's in town, you know, the train station. Yeah. And at them time, the, the train shop comes to them. Yeah, yeah. That one was connected to this? No, this, one, this was for the tone of the All right, so here. And then the, the commander, he did not 